All right, so the next question then, the third question is, how do we know that God exists? How do we know that God exists? Well, as we saw, classical apologists advocate one or more of the theistic arguments, like the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, and so forth, which prove the existence of God. Evidentialists, on the other hand, typically rework these arguments into fact-based evidentiary forms, right? So they say, let's begin with the facts that we know about history and then move on from there. Reformed apologists uh, uniformly contend that these arguments, like for the existence of God and so forth, are unnecessary, and that belief in God can be or even should be a properly basic belief, right? You know, you recall... Um, Planticus, you know, God and other minds, right? We believe people have other minds. They're not just robots. And so uh, it's a properly basic belief. And there are many of these, right? The reliability of memory and so forth. And so the Reformed apologists then usually argue that theistic proofs in both their deductive and inductive forms are have various logical flaws. Right. So uh, for Clark, this means that theistic proofs such as cosmologic argument would simply be abandoned. But Van Til advocates for working them into one proof that is transcendental rather than deductive or inductive in form. That proof is that unless God is presupposed, there is no accounting for the world, its order or moral standards. And so, hmm. well, if you take those away, well, what do you have? Well, pretty much nothing, uh, at least nothing that you can stand on and, and, and want to use. And so, again, that's what Van Til is always kind of going to go back to, is that with, without the biblical Christian God, we couldn't know anything. We couldn't have justification for those things. And so uh, that ultimately leaves us with even to uh, to advocate against the, the form of Christianity is to actually um utilize the the concepts and truths of christianity and yeah. so he's going to say well why is that the case well because even in our rebellion we're still unable to get out of god's order and so uh, that's what uh, van Til um, is doing as well right all right number four if god does exist why does he permit evil all right so this is the famous problem of evil right that we have uh, we looked at earlier on in this chapter well, as we saw in previous chapters, classical apologists focus on the deductive problem of evil, right? So the idea is how can a good God exist with evil existing at the same time, right? How can God be all powerful, all knowing, and all loving, and yet evil exists? So that's the deductive problem, right? A kind of, uh, it's an implication that there's some contradiction in claiming that the traditional concept of God and evil both exist. And so uh, the usual answer that uh, classical apologists uh, give is that God permits evil because of the greater good resulting from creating beings with free will. So this is the free will defense of the problem of evil. And that's usually where classical apologists go. So you can have both God existing and evil existing because he's given the important, valuable free will so that we can choose. And of course, you know, uh, we choose to do evil on occasion. In fact, mostly <laughs> right. we choose that, right? <laughs> what about the evidentialist? Well, the evidentialist characteris characteristically deals with the inductive problem of evil, right? This is the idea that uh, does the great amount of evil count as significant evidence against God's existence, right? So it's not whether or not God and evil can coexist. That's the deductive problem. The inductive problem is there is so much evil. How can you claim that God exists, right? That's the that's the evidentialist uh, question that they're attempting to deal with. And so they argue, in effect, that the positive evidence for God's existence more than counterbalances the negative evidence of evil. Right. Well, then the Reformed apologists generally object to the free will defense that the uh, classicalist uh, kind of um, um, uh, is the biggest proponent of because it conflicts with the biblical view of God's sovereignty, with Plantica is, uh, being the notable exception here. Well, they also take to the exception to the evidentialist approach of weighing evidences for and against God's existence on a reform view of things. Everything in God's world must count as evidence for God's existence. 
There's, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, I was uh, viewed as the hungry, hungry hippo approach of, of, <laughs> of getting the, 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 the pebbles on one side or the other. Uh, no, all, all of it, uh, the, the, the entire board game exists uh, based on the, the, the designer of the board game. And so uh, all, all uh, even counterclaims uh, against it uh, still works as evidence for the existence of God. Uh, Conservative reformed apologists such as uh, Gordon Clark and Van Til stoutly defend the Calvinist teaching that God foreordains everything that happens. They argue that God is not liable for sin because although he is the ultimate cause of everything, he is not the direct or proximate cause of sin. So it's not that God has to force us to do evil. It's that we do evil because of our nature and uh, God is still sovereign that he allows even those actions to be utilized by him and where's the biggest example we can point to it's actually the cross and so Mm. we can say that all the all the the things that happened to jesus were evil wrong uh sinful but they were designed before the foundation of the world to uh bring about the uh the uh, redemption of his people which is the um most ultimate good uh, that could uh, come about from that and Mm. it's uh written by the author himself so he utilized even the 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 birth of the 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 most wicked ruler to the the birth of the the um the the most insignificant uh peasant uh, to bring about all the people uh, needed for uh christ to be crucified so right. uh, we see uh, that that as the big example right and oftentimes uh, this is called the greater good uh the odyssey right or, like for instance with the with redemption redemption is the greatest good and so god allows these things to happen to his own son in order to bring about the the greater good Uh 